My name is Daniel Khan Gilmore, and I'm a Debian developer. So Debian is an operating system. Um, we call it the Universal Operating System. It's um, it's been around for 20 years. Um, we have tens of thousands of software free software packages in it. Um, uh, everything from you know just like a simple text editor to system control units to very you know very specialized stuff for specific um, specific tasks. What's the goal of Debian is to be all free software, and then we take that ethos very seriously, right? What we want is you know the the, the software freedoms are. You know, freedom to use however you like, freedom to redistribute, freedom to modify, and re freedom to redistribute your modifications. And we take that so seriously that we, we think it's really important people should be able to take Debian and produce something else. I'm responsible for maintaining a handful of packages within Debian. Um, the one I've been doing the most work on recently has been GNU PG, uh, and the sort of family of projects around GNU PG. In Debian, all of the Debian developers must have an open PGP key. That's what they use to identify themselves, and we use that actually not so much for the secrecy that open PGP often provides, but to use it for, um, for authentication. So if you're going to make an official statement that you want the project to act on, then you'll need to sign that statement. And there's a couple of statements that you might want to make. So you might want to say, here's a new version of package X. You might want to say, um, I think the project needs to hold a vote on something. You might want to say, I want to take a vote. I want to act in my role as a Debian project member on this vote that's coming up. So if I want to add something to the archive, I sign it with my key as a Debian developer. And then I upload it, and the archive checks it and says, yep, this is verified. This is signed by one of the Debian developer keys. It's DKG's key. And I'll go ahead and, and upload it. You know, It'll be laid into the archive. Or the vote happens. Or Say I wanted to resign. I don't want someone to be able to forge a mail that says I resign and post it to the Debian mailing lists. Anybody can post anything to the Debian mailing lists. Forging email is easy. And people who rely on Debian end up relying on GNUPG as well. Um, and we do that because when we distribute software, the software that we're distributing also needs to be signed. Um, if you're installing any software today and you're not verifying it cryptographically, you've opened yourself to an attack by whoever can modify the, the software as it's in transit. Um, and when I say an attack, what are the kinds of things I mean? I mean, they can make you run arbitrary code, right? You think you're fetching a copy of Firefox. If it's not actually Firefox, they can put something on your, on your computer that um, spies on all of your web browsing. It looks like Firefox to you, but you don't know. Um, so Debian signs everything that it releases, and the tools generally will not let you install something by accident that hasn't actually been signed by the project. So, and all of those signatures are done with GNU-PG. In addition to looking within the project and outside of the project, we're also trying to verify that the software that we get from the outside of Debian is actually cryptographically signed. That's not universal, but we're doing that as well. So in general, we're trying to protect the integrity of the software ecosystem by ensuring that the software that we're using, that we know where it came from and that we have vouches for it, as it were, by the different people who are touching it along the way. The big scary boogeyman, of course, is sort of nation-state actors. I don't know how well we can actually effectively defend against a really dedicated, advanced, persistent threat like that. Um, but they certainly would need to do a lot more work than if we weren't using GPG to defend it. But there's way many, there's many, many more other actors besides that who want to be able to control what software you run on your machine. There's um, content delivery companies, there's uh, your ISP, there's advertisers, there's a whole range of folks who want to, you to run their software because they can make a buck off of you running their software or they can make a buck off of learning your habits. And the more that we can defend our users against that kind of scam artist, the better off our users will be, and the better off the ecosystem will be as a whole because those users will be able to do what they want to do. We've seen software that's been compromised by attacks on the infrastructure, um, and um, you know we catch those attacks because they're missing cryptographic signatures. I would say that the majority of people who rely on GNUPG have no idea that it's there. Um, and I say this not just from first order effects, but from second and third order effects as well. 
So the majority of people who run an operating system don't even think about how do we verify that the software that we're installing is the right piece of software. So whether or not you have a GPG key, whether or not you ever send encrypted mail, you're relying on GPG to ensure that your software updates actually work the way that you expect. Um, you're relying on a bunch of other stuff as well, but without GPG, that other stuff wouldn't actually be effective. In addition, many operating systems, many free software operating systems are installed on servers, and those servers run somewhere, um, and you interact with them, and everyone who interacts with them is actually depending on that software behaving the way that it's expected to behave. So even if you've never run free software on your own computer in your life, You've interacted with software running on a server someplace, and that software is running on a server that's running an operating system, and that operating system has updates, and that operating system is not getting compromised by someone sending it bad data because it's relying on GPG. So even if you've never touched free software and you have no plan on ever touching it, this is the second and third order effects, you're actually still relying on that working because it's part of this like, critical part of the infrastructure.